In this video, I'm going to talk about charging and discharging a capacitor through a CR circuit. So on the screen here, I have a CR circuit. So I have a capacitor of capacitance C, a resistor R, and uh, I have a source, a battery of EMF epsilon. So I have a double contact switch here. As you can see, it has terminals X and Y. Every time I connect my double contact switch to terminal X, it means the upper circuit is active and so current flows through the circuit like this in this manner. The lower circuit is not activated because this gap here is empty and because of that the capacitor is connected to the battery and the upper CR circuit serves as the charging circuit for this capacitor. If I disconnect from terminal X and I connect to terminal Y, then the lower CR circuit is active. Notice that the lower circuit does not involve any source of EMF, so the capacitor is entirely supplying the current through this circuit and it is discharging in that manner. So let's talk about charging the capacitor. I'll begin with that. So let's see what happens during charging. Assuming the upper circuit is active, so I'll draw an enlarged view of the capacitor plates. Then we have a source of EMF, suppose that's the positive terminal, and this is the negative. This is a source of DC. Uh, okay, so this is a positive terminal, this is a negative terminal. Now, ideally, electric current is going to flow from the negative, sorry, from the positive terminal of the battery. To the negative terminal just like this that's electric current but on the other hand this is a conventional current uh, direction flow on the other hand we'll have electrons flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal so these are electrons and we know from the elementary uh, atom uh, that we know that the electrons are negatively charged so the negatively charged electrons will be drifting from the negative side towards the positive. Now let's see what happens when the electrons leave the negative terminal of the battery or the source. They will come and accumulate on this plate. Let's say this is plate A and this is plate B. So the electrons accumulate on plate A. Let's say the first electron leaves the battery and it comes towards plate A. As soon as a neg uh, an electron, a negative charge is acquired by plate A, as we understand very well from electrostatics, a positive charge is going to be created by induction on the second plate. Now, if you don't know about uh, electrical induction, I'll leave a link to my video in the description where I actually have a full course of about 10 hours of electrostatics, including electrical induction so this process not only occurs once but it keeps on occurring in a cycle and for every electron that is added here uh, we'll have a positive charge here a negative a positive a negative and the positive and this process keeps on continuing until the charge on the capacitor plates is actually equivalent to that charge that is being supplied by the battery still by the laws of electrostatics when you have two charges uh, you know that are similar in that manner then there is going to be repulsion like charges repel so the process of electron flow will cease if the electrons on the plate a are actually uh, equal in terms of magnitude to the electrons that are leaving the battery so in that case the flow of electrons will cease and once there is no flow of electrons sorry once there is no flow of electrons then there is no flow of electric current current will also stop flowing at that time at that time when so i'll just write this and say that charging stops charging stops when the charge on the capacitor so when the charge on the capacitor equals the charge on the battery. Now when this occurs, the EMF V0, okay, I'll just use epsilon, the EMF epsilon of the battery 
and the PD across the capacitor plates VC are also going to be equal. So VC is going to be approximately equal to epsilon when this process stops and also the flow of current at that time is going to become zero. Now let me show you a graphical analysis of how this looks like. I'll draw this on a graph. Let's let's begin with the charge. Perhaps that's much better to consider. So the charge, as you notice, initially there is no charge on the capacitor plates. Therefore, the charge starts at zero and the charge is going to increase exponentially as more electrons are added to plate A and more protons are added to plate B. And so this process of charging is an exponential process in which charge increases up to a certain maximum value up to a certain maximum value which is seen to approach now in this video i'm not talking about why this is exponential the explanation to this is actually more mathematical uh this is like part one of this video about charging and discharging i'll leave a link in the description about the mathematical view of how this happens and we'll see why does this charging process uh, follow an exponential curve uh, then what happens to the current let's see so the current initially the current is flowing at its maximum because you know the capacitor is so empty and the battery is doing all its best to supply electrons so the current begins at a maximum value and then it keeps reducing it keeps reducing why does it reduce that's current against time <clears throat> why does the current certainly reduce well that's obvious because the more electrons we get on the capacitor or the more charge we get on the capacitor the more repulsion it is for the incoming electrons so that's very logical that we'll have the flow of current reduce slowly until the current approaches zero it really never becomes zero but it is asymptotic to the time axis what happens to the pd on the capacitor plates well i'll also talk about that briefly initially there is no charge and because charge is given by capacitance times potential difference because there is no charge then the pd is also going to be zero that's logical and as charges accumulate on the capacitor plates then we'll have more and more uh, of the pd increasing so the graph is also an exponential process and this pd increases until it approaches that of the uh, until it approaches i should say the emf of the source so this is pd against time so this is what happens during charging of the capacitor let's see what happens during discharge so i'll just go to another page uh, let's talk about discharge in a cr circuit so again we have our capacitor in this manner and then we also have this time around notice we do not have any resist uh, sorry we don't have any source i would rather have a resistor here i can place the resistor anywhere but just to make my diagram a little bit neat i'll place the resistor here so this is the discharge circuit notice from the previous diagram that the current was flowing from the positive to the negative in this direction this plate was charged positively and this was charged negatively i'll keep that in mind so this is positive and this is negative so previously i called this plate a and i called this plate b and this is my resistor r now notice what happens in the second case when we are discharging the capacitor the plate b is now positively charged and a is negatively charged so the capacitor is now serving as our battery where this is the positive terminal so current is going to flow in this direction notice that this direction is actually opposite to this direction here okay so during charging the uh, the direction of current and that of discharge are actually opposite as a consequence of you know what happens to the plates during charging so the current is now taking the reverse direction and then another important thing to look out for here is that now that there is no source of emf 
and this resistor is actually a load so it's using up some of the energy in form of heat so electrons are going to keep flow of course electrons are now flowing in this direction electrons are going to keep flowing uh, or current to be more specific through the resistor and this resistor is going to keep dissipating dissipating heat oops so this resistor is going to keep dissipating heat in other words it's using up the electrical energy yeah uh, so it's going to keep dissipating heat energy so it's actually converting the electrical energy to heat energy that's what resistors do naturally so this process will continue until a time when the capacitor does not have any other charge any more charge when it is actually discharged even if we didn't actually have a resistor in this uh, illustration the electrons would simply flow and they would neutralize the plate b of the capacitor and it will still get to zero charge so either uh, either way whether you have a, capa uh, a resistor or not the capacitor is discharged when the two plates are interconnected like that okay let's draw graphs for this process i'll begin with that of charge still now what happens in this case the charge began when it's maximum and then it kept on reducing until it approximately becomes zero so that's what happens during the discharge process so i have time in seconds then i have charge in coulombs this is the maximum charge perhaps q0 let's see what happens to the current now think about this for a sec what's happening to the current in this case the current does it begin at maximum or minimum of course the current is going to begin at maximum value because uh, the capacitor is fully charged and this current will keep reducing as the capacitor is discharging the only difference here is that this current is flowing in the opposite direction so literally the current is decreasing still in a similar manner from the maximum uh, it goes on decreasing and then let's see what happens to the pd uh, across the plates of the capacitor so there we have it i'll just make this better oops okay so i have the pd against the time in seconds okay still initially the potential difference is too huge here because the capacitor is fully charged but as time increases the capacitor discharges so this is very similar to that of charge it decreases and approximately becomes zero although it really never gets to that zero practically so this is what we have in most textbooks so if you're doing this for an exam or something you'll realize that these graphs of charging and discharge are actually drawn uh, when they are actually combined together so i'll also do that here maybe just in case so i'll draw combined combined graphs for charging and discharge let me begin with the graph of current versus time so this is what we have oops okay there we go so we have current that's in amperes and then we have time in seconds during charging current starts at a maximum value and reduces nearly to zero in that sense then during so this is i should just write here charging during discharge we noticed that the current actually takes an opposite direction but still it is reducing so there we go current takes this direction now it reduces still to zero but now in an opposite direction so this graph shows us the variation of current notice that oops notice that the maximum value here is the same as the maximum value with which it starts to discharge so if i call this value i0 this is also negative i0 so current is flowing in the opposite direction uh, i'll just do this for charge or pd these graphs are the same for charge and pd so 
I'll just do one of them. Let's do charge. Charge versus time. Okay. Ah, now what's happening? I'm really writing very badly. So there we have our vertical axis for charge. And there we have the time axis. So we have, have charge in coulombs. There we go. What happens during charging? Well, we just saw that charge increases from zero up to a certain maximum value. And then, ah, just want to draw dotted lines here. So this is charging. Then what happens during discharge? The charge actually starts from a maximum value and reduces to zero. So, okay, so this is what happens during the discharge process. It begins from a maximum value and then goes all the way to nearly zero. So this is discharge. The same happens for potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. It starts with a maximum value and then goes all the way to zero. Okay, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. And also, if you need a more detailed description of how this charging and discharge occurs, especially in a mathematical sense, uh, be sure to check the description. I have a link where I actually derive equations for charging and discharging the capacitor. Thanks for watching this video. See you again.